today's lesson is going to have us focus on learning about mole ratios and stoichiometry in general. Before I talk about this slide, I want you to pause and get everything copied down. You absolutely have to have the stoichiometry map copied down in its entirety in your notebook for tomorrow. All right, I'm assuming that you did what I asked you to do. So now what I'd like you to do is take a look at the red and the green parts of this new map. How are these similar to the mole map? Absolutely, they are exactly the same, except now we have A's and B's, because now we're going to connect two mole maps together using something called a mole ratio right here. This is your new thing. Right here, the mole ratio comes from the chemical reaction. This is our bridge so that we can predict products. If we know how much product we want to make, we can back calculate and figure out how much of our reactants we need. This is a very powerful tool for us, and it's an extremely important part of dimensional analysis for stoichiometry. So what exactly is a mole ratio? Well, a ratio is a division problem in math class. And here, we're going to create equalities from equations. So if we take a look at the synthesis equation for water, there's a number of equalities that we can build. We know that there are uh, four atoms of hydrogen on the reactant side and there are four atoms of hydrogen on the product side. We also know that there are two atoms of oxygen on the reactant side and two atoms of oxygen on the product side. We can also look at these quantities with our coefficients as moles, not just atoms. So now we can say we have two moles of hydrogen because of the two coefficient on the hydrogen. And in order to make this reaction go, we need one mole of oxygen. So two moles of hydrogen are needed along with one mole of oxygen. So here's an equality. We can build a mole ratio from this. If we want to get rid of moles of hydrogen, then we build the conversion factor with two moles of hydrogen on the bottom and one mole of oxygen on top. Or we can build and get rid build the conversion factor the other way to get rid of moles of oxygen and get to moles of hydrogen. We use the coefficients from the equation one mole of oxygen to two moles of hydrogen. We simply use these mole ratios that we call them. They're still conversion factors, just like in regular dimensional analysis, but we use them to convert between chemicals now. Notice here the units are the same. In everything we did with our mole conversions in chapter uh, seven, we were only converting units. The chemical never changed. But now we're changing chemicals with a conversion factor, whereas before we weren't. This is the real important part of a mole ratio. All right, I need you to write down this example in your notebook, including the equation. So how do we go about building this conversion factor? Let's take a look, guys. We are asked to determine the number of moles of water produced if three moles of hydrogen react. Let's go back to strategies and knowns. So our strategy here requires us to take a look at our mole map, or our stoichiometry map, I'm sorry. So let's see. Can I make it bigger? Of course I can. So to get from moles of A to moles of B, 
moles of A are red, moles of B are green, we have to go across the blue bridge called the mole ratio from the chemical reaction. So we need to go from moles of A to moles of B. We can do that in one step using the mole ratio. So let's do that. Our A this time is the chemical that has the number. And we have three moles, oops, let me get my pen. We have three moles of oxygen here. So three moles of oxygen, and we want to get to moles of water. So we build our equality here for our known. If we look at the equation, the coefficient in front of oxygen is assumed to be 1 and the coefficient in front of water is 2. So we build our equality like that. For every one mole of oxygen that reacts, we produce two moles of water. The last step is our calculation. We always write our given down first, right? So three moles of oxygen we build our conversion factor. It looks like my stoic map's going to get in the way, so I'm going to move it up here. We build our conversion factor. We want to get rid of moles of oxygen and get to moles of water. There's one mole of oxygen for every two moles of water. So we multiply three times two, divide by one, our moles of oxygen cancel out because of the division, and we end up with six moles of water for our answer. You have to have, absolutely, your sig figs, your unit, and your chemical at every single step. Okay, this is our second and last example for the night. Please copy down the problem as well as the equation. All right, let's take a look at this problem. It tells us to determine the number of moles of oxygen that are required to produce 24.32 moles of carbon dioxide. So again, when we take a look at our stoic map, we are at, uh, we are at moles of A right here, and we want to get to moles of B right here using our new found mole ratio from the chemical equation or chemical reaction. So let's take care of this and get it out of the way. I'll, you know what, I'll move it up here so it's out of the way. All right, so let's go to our strategy again. We have 24.32 moles of carbon dioxide and we have to get to moles of oxygen. If we look at our equation, we have three moles of carbon dioxide being produced for every four, or excuse me, five moles of oxygen that react. So three moles of carbon dioxide are equal to five moles of oxygen. Now all that's left is our calculation. We always start with the given and its va the given value and its unit and chemical. So we have 24.32 moles of carbon dioxide and we build our conversion factor. We want to get rid of moles of carbon dioxide and go to moles of oxygen and the numbers follow. Three moles of carbon dioxide to five moles of oxygen. Again, this is our mole ratio, and we got our numbers from the chemical reaction. That's why it was important for you to have that in your notes. So we take, um, if you recall, mathematically we calculate by taking 24.32 times our 5, divide by our denominator, when we do this, keeping with proper sig figs, our answer is going to be 40.53 moles of oxygen. 
this ends our conversation for tonight. We will look at multi-step problems tomorrow night and the night after that. But for right now, I just want you to understand mole ratios. Have a great night.